Hello everyone and welcome to another fantasy match preview. This is for the game between West Indies and Zimbabwe. Both teams had polar games while Zimbabwe won their first one. West Indies lost their first one. We were not expecting that. So Nikhil Bhai is here to tell you if Zimbabwe is going to knock West Indies out here or if we have a turnaround for the Windies. Uh, hello everyone. Firstly, thank you so much for having me. And yes, I do feel if West Indies continue to be very lax or as mm. their head coach put it, very unprofessional with the bat, Zimbabwe has enough bowling options and good ones also to trouble this West Indies mm. lineup. Uh, I think even the team itself will be will be very uh, disappointed with the way they got out. I mean, they collapsed just like that. There was mm. you never saw a team who's like won two two T Twenty World Cups. I mean, they didn't. They haven't played like that. Uh, yes, they have made many personal changes as well. They've dropped big names, mm. but the big names that are there are also not doing anything. So uh, very keen to see how they uh, play. The last T20 World Cup did not go like, to go to plans well. Uh, they got bundled out very cheaply then. Let's see if, if they uh, change things around for themselves. Yes, totally. And before we get to the preview, keep in mind that you join in on the Depositors Leaderboard exclusively on fan to play The refer code and the app link is in the description. So go download it right now. Too many advantages. You can see the best amount that has already been put in the Depositors Leaderboard and eclipse that amount and go and win these prizes and then use that deposit cash for the in-cash contest to across the T20 World Cup and other games. And apart from that, keep in mind, you can use less than less than three batters, less than three bowlers exclusively on this app. So I feel like that's a big advantage for you. So seize it right away and we'll get to the preview for this game. Yes, and don't forget there's a car coming up in the leaderboard just to reiterate. Uh... Best time to make the most of games that are not going as per enough logic and data. Go with your gut feel, but still back the inform guys. So that is not changing. If you see, you will say that yes, teams are not sometimes playing to plan or whatever, but it is still on form. Whoever is doing well is doing well. So there's no law of average or anything catching up as of now. So do that, make multiple teams, and Jai Mataji. Yes, and if you feel like law of averages is catching up, then just check Sikandar Raza's last set of innings and that will be done for you there. But anyway, we're playing this game at Hobart, where we saw, I feel, a decent pitch to bat on. But yet, I think the teams will opt to bat first and they'll try to target those leg side boundaries because you can see one side here is pretty short and apart from that, it's pretty even out. And what's, what's also to keep in mind is... We talked about this in the previous video as well, that Raza played a lot of hoifs, but any one of them could have easily just gone to hand uh, if it was you know, just slightly mistimed. But then that's the thing about form. When mm. you are in good form, you are hitting the ball well, uh, you will get that boundary, but when you are not, you will go straight up. Uh, so that, I think, is one thing to keep in mind. And also, I feel West Indies did not use their bowling as well. Mm -hmm. I feel it's incredibly stupid to not give the new ball to Jason Holder. Kyle Mayers can take 10 wickets in 10 balls, but I'll still say that Jason Holder has to bowl with the new ball. It is just a no-brainer. And uh, yes, as I said, Kyle Mayers, Kyle Mayers can take 10. I don't care, but Holder this still has to bowl. <laughs> yeah, this is not CPL. Anyway, yes. And even though Holder didn't complete his quota in the last game, I think we're still backing him for captaincy because yeah. we feel he is the best option. But anyway, looking at our team, first up, in the keeper, we have gone with Chakabwa. Now, we know that Puran is not showing great form anyway. Maybe if he's batting first, you can consider him. But we have a lot of other West Indian options to consider. So, we felt it appropriate to go with the Zimbabwean keeper, especially because he's also going to open and a lot of catching probabilities with someone like Muzrabani and Chatara bowling. Yes, I think that's it. We did discuss about this in the previous game as well. A keeper opener or a 3-4 is still a very safer option to take a risk on because you know the keeping option, 3 catches, 24 points, your job is done. So, yeah. those are very crucial things to keep in mind. And uh, the other keeper, the less said, the better. <laughs> yep. So, anyway, on to the batsmen. We have gone with Evan Lewis and Brandon King, expecting both to get decent opportunity. 
But if Craig Irvin is batting first, again, you can consider him because he's someone who takes his time. And these pitches have shown that you can probably take some time at the start and then accelerate. So if that happens, then you can consider him too. Yeah, I think he'll be a, a decent uh, option to try out. And especially while batting first, I think he sometimes does much better as compared to chases. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think in the batting section, we'll still probably be having only two guys eventually when uh, you see the team. But uh, decent options from both sides. Uh, but see, Evan Lewis is also coming off a very off fitness time. So if you want, maybe you can drop him and take Craig Avain if you feel he'll do well. But uh, whoever takes from batting, it's going to be a slightly punt in this uh, in these matches. Yes, and hence we'll focus on the better section, the all-rounder section. Here we've gone with Sean Williams, who batted decently, played one shot too many. But yes, he also bowled three overs. Sikandar Raza, who we don't have to talk much about, been in really good form and is also going to bowl, is our vice-captain. Kyle Mears, who, if you feel like West Indies, will take some sense and not bowl him at the start and probably just use him as a batter, then he's safe enough for you to not make captain, vice-captain. And Jason Holder, who's our captain, who we're expecting the West Indies to learn from that last game and give him their full, give him his full quota. I think the thing to remember here is, see, Kyle Mayers can take wickets. That's not a problem. But the thing is, hmm. you have a better option. That guy, if Kyle Mayers is taking one, Holder can take two or three. And that's just because that's the kind of bowler Holder is and that's the kind of discipline that you get from Jason. So, I still will not be surprised to see Kyle Mayers bowl one. But if hmm. it doesn't take a wicket, go to Holder. Then you bring back Mayers, I don't care. But my point is, if you have people that are doing well for you, why would you not want to use them more? Uh, even with the batting, I always feel Jason Holder is very underrated in this format as an all-rounder. Uh, I'm not saying this on flat decks, but on decks hmm. that are helping you bounce, carry, and there is a movement around, Jason Holder is quality. So that's the reason for that rank uh, that Kyle Mays can take 10. If he takes 10, I hope I have a captain as well. But for now, uh, Jason remains the captain. And uh, with Sikandar Raza, see, you have to know Sikandar Raza also plays a lot, a uh, much aggressive game, but he's still calculated. It's not blind slogging. So that is the difference between trying to back a guy who is hitting every ball as compared to the guy who is able to pace his knock much better. And which is why you see his probably vice captain if you want and you're very confident of him doing well you can obviously swap him with a uh, holder as raza captain and holder vc so that will also not be wrong but again that is the logic behind trying to give these two guys the uh, captaincy vice captains yes and also raza can bowl more last game williams bowled more than raza because there were a lot of right handers in ireland but this time with west indies we can expect raza to bowl a little more and then when we look at the bowling options, we have gone with Obed, McCoy, Odian Smith and Alzari Joseph. We have gone with all the West Indies bowlers. We are expecting them to come hard in this game. And from Zimbabwe, we have, we have gone with Blessing Muzrabani. One thing for you to keep in mind is Akhil Hossain will come up against a lot of left-handers. So maybe if he's bowling first, he's a safe leave, especially because he didn't take too many wickets in the last game. So it's not like too many people bring him in small leagues. But if he's bowling second, you can probably take him in as a differential. Yep. And that's the going to be the case. Like even in the game that Namibia played against Netherlands, uh, Namibia batted first, but they hardly used their resources. You had Smith and Vise coming in only in the last two overs. So uh, sometimes it does feel surprising why teams do that, but they are doing it. Uh, so if Zimbabwe bat first, it's not necessarily that what works one day will work the other day. You still have to put in those hard yards and do well. Like Freiling scored a 43 from 48. But that was not as impactful as the man, as the knock in the first game versus Sri Lanka. So, uh, I'll say just don't go by the same script, uh, but back your visualization in terms of what you think is likely to happen. And uh, yes, rest, you can always try multiple combinations in front of play. Yes, absolutely. And now we'll go to Nikhil Bhai's one GL pick. And to ensure that that GL pick is also dream team captain, go break the like button below yes. so that Nikhil Bhai's good luck is transferred into there. So tell us, Nikhil, who do you feel is that person in this game? Hopefully, he gets too old. Ryan Bull. I think he's a very, very good pick. Uh, yeah. He did that against Australia as well, very, very, very recently. And uh, I don't think West Indies enjoy facing leg spin much 
Yes, mm. they can hit him for 60 as well. That's fine. But he could potentially take three, four wickets. Uh, so I'll take a punt on him in one of my teams for sure. Uh, he'd also a handy bat. So if mm. you feel that the Cindy Spaces will do the job up top, you can drop the Zimbabwean top order, take Williams, Raza, Ryan Burl. You still get probably 12 overs from there uh, if they all bowl. So I think Ryan Burl could do the job. Right, very fair call. And my one pick for this specific game is Nicholas Puran. And oh. uh, that especially if he's batting first, I feel like he can have some good impact because I know that West Indies, except for Muzrabani, I don't feel have raw pace. And I feel like that could work to his advantage. So, hence I'm going with Puran for this one. Yeah, so which is why I said less said the better because I thought this was coming and good. At least the predictions are working here also. Good. That's good. <laughs> So anyway, on that note, we'll wrap up this preview. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. Please do share this preview with as many people as possible so that more people can join in with us and we can help you get to the best possible benefits and offers. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a great game. Yes, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Always happy to listen to constructive feedback. But yes, play responsibly, go by our gut feel and happy with us. <laughs>